<laughs> well, hello, friends. Cheap skies to all. I'm going to do a brief uh, assembly video of the Celestron Power Seeker 70AZ. Uh, this is the Walmart model that you're looking at here in the uh, video. Uh, and if you're going to buy one, I would suggest you get it from Walmart. You get a uh, red dot finder with it instead of uh, one of the common cheap finders. And you also get an extra lens, although the lenses uh, are rather cheap <laughs> that comes with the Walmart model. But I must also tell you I had a chance to look at this. Uh, the other morning finally the clouds cleared out and I caught Venus in the morning and the uh, telescope does a beautiful job on it. Uh, colors, cloud banding, uh, unfortunately the lens had a piece of thread in it and Celestron has uh, uh, agreed to send me a new lens. I had no problem with them at all uh, within six hours of me making a request and them uh, answering back a few emails they uh, have shipped a new lens to me that should be here this week so enough of this the reason I made this video is when I bought this uh, telescope I wanted to uh, look at it and see how it was put together I hate reading instructions my my first uh, uh, standard operating procedures to throw them away and do it myself which most guys do that <laughs> so I put the thing together I really wanted to show you putting it me putting it together to you but uh, the circumstances did not dictate that I could do that so I'll do it backwards and show you how to do it so as we get begin you see here with my extremely cheap pointer piece of plastic that the duster thingy goes on. The mount and the tripod come assembled in the box. You don't have to uh, put any of this together. It is already together for you. The only thing you need to do is put the uh, lens tray on down here and as I will show you in a minute it has a uh, threaded bolt on it all you have to do is screw it into the uh, brass threading that's already there I don't have it on there because uh, it's difficult for it to shut up when that plates on there to collapse the tripods by the way while I'm thinking of it this thing weighs about four pounds you can pick this up with two fingers this is a great scope to grab and throw in the car and uh, take off with. So moving along, now that we know that this has come assembled for you, what you do there is a uh, wing nut here, a tightening wing nut, also one on the opposite side. You take the tube out, drop it in there, put the two wing nut, wing bolts I should say, into the tube and gently tighten them finger tight. The next thing that's in the box is a silver rod which adjusts the uh, up and down. Um, it is by itself. You have to take this screw out right here and there is a loop on the end of this long rod that fits in there and then the bolt goes back in they supply the screwdriver if you can call it that let's call it a tool they su uh, supply the tool to tighten that back up before you put it in here which is the other end of it you have to loosen this uh, another I will call it a wing bolt and there is a silver let me see if I can turn this a little bit there is a silver doodad there with a hole in it which you can rotate to some degree to get this rod into it make sure that this rod and the holder on this end does not bind it should slide freely through the uh, 
the uh, rod holder there. Then again, tighten this uh, just finger tight that it can slide a little bit. This one you want to tighten down real good. The next thing that comes with a red dot finder, as I mentioned before, that is up here. There are two. Let me see if I, I think I'm up against the wall here. I don't think it'll turn anymore. There are two bolts sticking up from the tube with these uh, little nuts on the top of them. You simply stick the finder down over the bolts, tighten up the two. You can't see the other one, but there's a silver one over here too. Tighten up these two nuts on top of it. Wiggle it a little bit as you're tightening it so that the uh, bracket fits snugly and uh, securely to the tube. The last thing you have to put in is the diagonal here at the end. It's just a matter of loosening these little thumb screws here and sticking it into the focusing tube. Uh, while we're looking at the star diag or the uh, red dot finder here, uh, could be a little confusing how this works. It was for me so I'll make it easy for you. Up here under this big round ring you're going to find a plastic uh, tab sticking out. Uh, you just pull that out. That uh, allows the battery in it to work. I haven't looked at the battery but I assume it's one of those little flat uh, uh, watch batteries that you get at Radio Shack or Kmart or any place else. This knob here is the on off switch it's, it has a little white marking on there and the part down here and it also clicks on and off so you can actually hear when it's on and off. Where I was confused was how you uh, adjusted the sight. I could find the one adjustment. I believe this is the left or right but I couldn't find the other one and it was probably because it was right in front of my eyes. It's down under the bottom here. So you have two adjustments, one down there, one up here, and you can see by turning them, one will move them right, left, one will move up, down. Now the way to use this is to, during either the morning or evening, right when it's getting dark or light, the way I did it was to find a street light in the telescope and center the street light in the in the uh, eyepiece here and then I just simply crank the two adjustments on this so the little red dot that shows up on there was in the center of the street light and let me tell you it was a, worked perfectly now the street light I used was on a hill about a quarter of a mile away I don't suggest you do it on one close uh, the further away the better or it could be a treetop or anything else. Uh, the key is to do it at uh, either early morning when it's just getting light or just getting dark because this red light um, could be dimmed by the light. So anyhow, to make a long story short, once I got this focused in with this and they were both in alignment, uh, Venus was rising the other morning. I put the dot right on Venus and I looked into the eyepiece and it was absolutely perfectly centered on Venus. So another reason you should get the Walmart model is this little puppy right here. And that about uh, ends up how you put it together. So I swing it back around here. This uh, little knob here which you can see I have real loose since I'm swinging this around, tightens the left-right motion. Uh, this rod, which you can tighten here, the up and down, and there is a, if you let this just snug and not tight, this little knob here is a slow motion knob to adjust the height of the uh, telescope few lens covers were uh, enclosed with it. I have one on there, the big one on the end, and uh, 
just to show you a few things here before I end up the video. This is the uh, lens cover plate. You see the bolt there on the end. This turns up this way, and the bolt. I don't know if you can see it there. Yeah, there it is. The bolt just goes over here and is down in there and screws into that little brass fitting that I told you about right there. Uh, the three eyepieces come looking like this in a nice little plastic thingy, inch and a quarter. There's also a three times Barlow lens included with the uh, package. As you can see here, I haven't even taken this one out yet. And it would just go into your scope here, and then your other lens would go on top of it. Uh, for my scope, I have purchased a uh, Zoomal a UHC filter, which is here. This is to control the light uh, interference that I have. There's a camera. Hello, camera. There, that's to control the light interference because I live in a highly polluted area. And I also bought a, probably can't see it, but it's in there, a moon filter. And that's about it for the Celestron Power Seeker 70AZ. Again, this is a Walmart model. Uh, I intend to buy a couple good eyepieces for it. I think it's a tremendous value for the money. Uh, you're not going to see uh, God with this thing, but uh, you might see a few angels out there. Again, the pluses to this are it is extremely easy to uh, aim the telescope with that red dot finder, and it weighs almost nothing. A child could carry this thing without uh, any effort whatsoever. Uh, finally, let me reach over here and see if I can make a disaster. I have taken an old Logitech webcam, which is here, Mr. Eyeball, and uh, I have already tested this out on my uh, uh, Mead reflector telescope. This will be attached to the one you're looking at here to take pictures with it. Um, I'll upload some videos later and let you know how that goes, but uh, we're just in the beginning stages here, folks. Astronomy on the cheap. It doesn't get any cheaper than me. Enjoy your day. We'll see you the next time.